Hello, hello. Uh, new moon, Friday in Cancer, 6, 17 p.m., a few hours after that. Um, yeah. July new moon, ancient features. This Friday, July 9th, the moon is new. And when the queen of the night initiates another cycle, we can feel the energetic reset inside of us as well. Our inner tides crash up against the waves of the outer collective. Themes of grief, rage, and heartbreak surface alongside horizon lines of hope, beauty, and possibility. Our fundamental interconnection must be taken into consideration as we navigate the winding truths of our own singular sacred life. This is the time when we crave connection, acceptance, and affirmation around our most sacred dreams. Try not to rely on the external world for approval. The most intimate of our visions will easily get dashed upon the jagged rocks of skeptics' withering stare. Under a moonless sky, find certainty within. It's after the end of the world, don't you know that yet? Empires fall, we remain. So many survive after genocides and there are so many who continue to carve new paths after an apocalypse. There are those who say the beginning of Homo sapiens was also the beginning of Earth's demise. The world didn't start ending or today or in the past five years. There have been many apocalypses throughout the course of history. For indigenous people on North America, the apocalypse began around 1492 and continued on over hundreds of years. Time after time, for so many people, animals, plants, and places, life goes on after the end of the world. Visioning, co-creation, connection, and magic still exist amidst decay collapse and oppression death and life in simul simul simultaneous simultaneity is not new death and life and simultaneity is not new an entire collective of folks and plants and animals and the elements and a planet learning to adapt resist stay creative stay embodied and stay in movement isn't new either History repeats itself while radical change takes hold. This is an ancient future. You understand the ancient future well, as it lives in your bones. Even though you might not have been cut off from parts of your lineage, even though you might have been cut off from parts of your lineage, aspects of your knowing it finds ways to bubble through the surface of your psyche in dreams, potent longings, and visitations from your ancestors or spirit. The ancient future beckons you. You also understand the ancient future each time you create it. By now, you've experienced many instances in which you've been able to use your discernment of love and intuition to summon another future. And in spite of chaos and trauma, you've imagined and drafted new maps and technologies out of rubble you already know. Of being to be of self. Today, the moon is new in itself rising in the sign of cancer in traditional astrology. This sign corresponds with the fourth house of ancestry, home, belonging, and family. People who have trouble with the stereotypical can cancerian archetype, and there are many, will fixate on the overly emotional aspect of their signs, tears, neediness, vulnerability, and that shows us in their fears an inability to sit with their own emotions and needs of others. Many of those people had caretakers who had no time for their tears. 
Shame often lingers around one's unmet needs, creating hatred of emotions deemed unruly. Cancer, the sign that has corresponded with the mother, can also highlight what we didn't receive from our own parents. The mother is often a stand-in for all our caretakers' shortcomings. She takes the blame for which, for much more than her own failings. She is the archetype of all the care we have ever needed but did not receive. It is any wonder that folks can't deal with the archetype of someone who is bound to betray them. It is any wonder that folks can't deal with the archetype of someone who is bound to betray them. The new moon could assist with healing around how you must care for yourself. Practice vulnerability. Show your sweet spots to others. Ask for help. Communicate a desire. Give acceptance and space to complex emotions. Emotions often are a sight of your intuition, a way to come back home. Emotions are energy. To be able to reach your fullest magical potential, you must be able to generate emotional states from within. The art of understanding, transmuting, and intentionality, directly directing energy is magic. Expertise in emotionality is a tool that must be refined. From the being comes action, momentum, and our why. Your why is your integrity, also known as your essence. And this is one baseline of a spiritual practice. Invoke curiosity about who you are which is who you want to be. Think about the toolkits you might need, somatic, meditative, activities, therapeutic, community-based, to feel most yourself. Name what emotional states give you the energy you need to feel at home in yourself as you navigate the complexities of your reality, of being, of place, of being your own home. For reasons, personal or political, home will always be complicated. Home correlates with power wars, where power wars have been waged over territories, over the sovereignty, the control of bodies. Bodies are homes to our souls, ancestors and ancient futures. Because of the traditional idea of home is so complex and often ambiguous, it could be useful to consider the concept of home in some gentler ways. Home is all the knowledge the water inside you carries. Ancestors, ancient futures, roots flowing out of your ocean heart. Home is all the places you enjoy being, literally and or figuratively. Over time, you become of a place, or of many, as you remember, as you fulfill longings, you enact your own homecoming. This is a fertile new moon, falling in the time of the moon and sun, the time of the harvest. It can aid you with the caretaking and intuitive work. It will support abundance magic and ancestral communion. The new moon will help you create your own bold, futuristic magic. This one life, still vibrant and complex and filled with potential, is still yours for the feeling, the imagining, and the taking. After the end of the world, you become the future by creating it. You create the future by becoming it. Following is a spell designed to cement your own states of energetic self and emotional safety as you call in support and positive synchronicities. This is a spell to design to call in support for your future desire. If you aren't interested in spell work, you may wish to do some journaling and reflection around some of the prompts and themes this time brings up. 
quite dark where I'm at. But where I'm at is very pretty. The spell takes place over three days, if possible. Stay in a state of ritual and intention through the weekend. This spell is intentionally vague to help you rely on your own intuition and your craft and you, as you craft it. Today, Friday night, also, sorry for the late message on this. Reset, Friday night, reset, if you can. Spend the night without screens. Stretch, meditate, take part in slower activities that help you recharge. Decide what you'll be calling in. Be as specific as possible and imagine what you would be doing, what support you would need, what you would be saying about your life once you received your desire, how you would feel, what qualities would, what qualities would you need to embody more often? What would the external or internal metrics or successful spell results be? What symbols, colors, tools, tarot cards, plants, or words correlate to your desire? What would help boost you energetically in your spell? And what would you need to have around you more often? What habits would you need to stick to? How would you need to feel more often? And how would you need to create? What synchronicities synchronicities would you need to create and activate and what objects symbolize the synchronicities you need write it all down if any blocks or resistance come up write them down on a separate piece of paper you can work with those during the waning moon. Saturday enact emotional discipline Today, spend at least half of your day generating the feelings, the qualities, the energy that correspond to your desires slash future life. Maybe you dance to a playlist. Maybe you spend time in places that boost your mood. Maybe you wear a certain color. Maybe you plan out a whole day where you are living in the future, acting as if you were working, acting as if what you will be working towards has come to pass. Gather or make whatever tools you will be using in your spell and clean your altar and the room it is in and set up your altar for the spell. When day turns to night, greet the moon. Go outside as long as you can. You may not be able to see the moon as it is still new and write a letter to the moon. Speak to the moon and ask the moon for help. If you can, moon bathe or dip yourself in water. Listen to whatever messages come through. And before you go to sleep, ask your dreams for any symbols or guidance. And lastly, on Sunday, anytime Sunday, cast your spell. Your spell will consist of your unique symbols, colors, and energy. And the more you bring forth the energy that correlates with your desire, the more potent your magic will be. A key component of this spell is also visualizing all the synchronicities that will affirm you are on your path. You could write them down, sing them out aloud, and burn them. You can imagine yourself in the future receiving your desire and get as creative as you want. Be completely energetically at home. I love y'all. Much love. Bye-bye. That's good stuff. Peter Brown.